Okay, so we're on 3.4, transformations of cubic and quartic functions. This should be mainly review for you because you did so many transformations in grade 11. All you're doing differently now is applying it to a cubic or quartic function. So on my PB website, there is a link to this handout if you want to get it um, and come back or just follow along and you'll probably find this pretty easy. It says the graph of y equals x cubed is transformed to obtain the graph of y equals minus 3, 2, x plus 1, bracket, bracket, cubed, plus 5. State the parameters a, k, d, c, and describe the corresponding transformations. Okay, so let's go through what's the a value. Now you know a, that's the first letter here in the front, this number here would represent a. And there are two things that are happening here, the negative and the 3. So let's talk about the different transformations. One would be the negative, so it's a reflection about, hopefully you remember which axis, I'll give you a chance to think about it, reflection about the, now remember it's affecting the y values, these ones here, this minus 3 and the plus 5 affect y, so if we're affecting y's, we're reflecting about the x-axis. So reflection about the x-axis. Now some of this you might already know, but I'm going to emphasize it again anyway, just to help you out, remind you. Okay, three. Three is the A value. This is talking about vertical changes. Remember these ones underlined in red are vertical changes. So this is a vertical stretch by a factor of three. Remember that the y changes are always straightforward. The x ones are the ones we have to worry about. Okay, the third change here, so that's 1, 2, 3. This value here, 2. 2 is your k value. And if you remember, anything inside the brackets here has to do with x. So this is k, this is c, this is d out here. Now remember that this, um, anything that happens to x is, I always tell my students, just think of it as being all backwards from what it says. If it's a 2 here, remember that it's a horizontal stretch by 1 over k. So instead of multiplying by 2, you're dividing by 2 because 1 half is dividing by 2, right? So we say um, vertical, oh sorry. Horizontal, I just got finished saying they're all the horizontals inside the bracket. So it's horizontal. Now, it looks like it would be a stretch, but it's going to be a compression. Remember, backwards. Horizontal compression by a factor of 1 over that value, so 1 half. The fourth thing that's happening is our C value here. It looks like it's going to the right one, but it's going to the left. So it's horizontal shift left one unit and finally this plus five that's vertical remember anything outside the brackets is a vertical so it's a vertical shift up five units and there you go that's kind of a summary of everything you need to know isn't it okay so the next part here says complete the table so what they want you to do here is they're giving you these coordinates here for y equals x cubed and they want to know what would be the coordinates of these points given these transformations. So this one is pre pretty easy. If I asked you, I'm going to write above here, I'm going to write out what the mapping rule would be. So x and y go to, so for this one we're only changing the x's, right? It's inside the bracket. So it's my k value is 2. So I'm going to divide the x's by 2. So it's going to be x over 2 and nothing happens to y. So very easily here, I'm just going to divide all the x's by 2. It's just uh, 0 divided by 2 is 0. 1 divided by 2 is a half. I'm not changing the y's at all. No change to y. This one here, the mapping rule would be, um, now remember anything outside is a y, so this is my y change here. 
and the x change is the one inside the brackets that's a k value here so i have an a and a k to worry about so my transformation is going to be or my mapping rule i'm going to divide my x by 2 x over 2 and my y's i'm going to multiply by minus 3 minus 3 y so that's pretty easy i can just copy the x's from here because i've already done the half and finally now i'm going to fix the y values boop, 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 do it fast so y times minus 3 minus 8 times minus 3 would be 24 and minus 3 times minus 1 is 3 minus 3 times 0 is 0 minus 3 and minus 6 there you go how quick is that now the last one here this encompasses all the changes we talked about up here it is the same function so we're going to do the mapping rule for that and that's going to be um, we're going to do x divided by 2 and then we're going to subtract 1 so minus 1 I shouldn't put the comma in right there right x over 2 minus 1 comma and the y's are going to be minus 3y plus 5. And there you go all you have to do is fill these ones in and um, the next part down here asks you to sketch that function so let's finish it off so we did x minus 2 so we're just going to subtract 1 from these so that's going to be minus 2 minus 3 halves minus 1 minus a half and zero boom 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 and now to the y's we've already done minus three of them here and now we're just going to add five I'm just saving a bit of time by looking to the other one okay so there's my coordinates they want me to sketch the graph so luckily they gave us a nice long graph here because we have minus two and 29 for our first point 24 29 so it's about here and we have minus one and a half and eight that's right there and we have minus one and five that's about there zero and minus one so there's my graph that's all i have of it now it's a cubic function you can see it's coming down like this going over there and it'll probably continue down like that okay so that's not a bad sketch uh, state the domain and range well you know what domain is I'll put it up here domain polynomials real numbers there's nothing I can't plug into this equation and get a solution and the range is also going to be y is an element of real numbers because you can see this is going up and down in both directions goes on forever okay so that that was pretty easy let's go to the other side describing transformations from an equation describe the transformations that must be applied to the graph of each power function f at x to obtain the transform function then write the corresponding equation state the domain and range state the vertex blah 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 okay let's look at this here so we've got an x to the fourth and we have an x to the fifth we're applying this transformation to it now describing or writing out the corresponding equation remember all you have to do to do that so y is going to be this so y is going to be equal to so i have two f this part here this is f at x right so that means i want this to be my x i'm plugging this in for x so i'm going to write two where I have the x I plug in this so one third x minus five close the brackets probably could square one here to the power of four and that's all you have to do so you plug this in this is like your x value we're doing the function to the fourth power and this is two so if I had a number out here I would just throw that back at the end here okay let's do the same thing for this one here x to the fifth okay so this is the function that we want the transformations so i leave the one quarter out front and i have x to the fifth i need square bracket because there's lots going on here now as i'm doing this 
I'm going to um, I'm going to fix this part right remember when you're doing uh, any transformations that the coefficient of x has to be 1 so you need to you need to factor that out so I'm going to pull that out as I do it so minus 2 x minus 3 close the bracket to the power 5 plus 4 it's that easy okay I know I make it look easy but I'm sure you're catching on after all that grade 11 work okay so these are the corresponding equations now I want to know what the domain and range is of each of these functions. So if I asked you this quartic function, can you tell me, um, do they ask you, describe the transformations? Okay, so let, let's do that for this first. What did we do? So we're, we have a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. Vertical stretch, factor 2, I'm going to write shorthand here. The one-third, now remember you're dividing by one over this, so one divided by a third is one times three over one, which is three. So that's a horizontal stretch by a factor of three, and the minus five means a horizontal shift, right five units. Okay, so if I took the point zero, 0, because I know this is a quartic function, and quartic functions go, remember they have, they go like this, right? This is positive leading coefficient, so it's going to look like this. So my domain is still going to be real numbers, but the range is going to be restricted by where this zero, 0 point went on this transformed function. So I need a little mapping rule. I want to know what happens to 0, 0. So I'm going to give the mapping rule first. So x, y is going to go to, so that's going to be 3x's plus 5 and 2y's. So this, so it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of 3 and shift to the right 5. And then y is just 2 times the y value. So I need to know where the vertex has gone. And that's going to be 5, 0. So it's only going to be shifted to the right 5. So that means that my vertex here is going to be at 5. So my domain is going to be x is an element of real numbers. And my range is going to be, because I didn't shift it up or down, it's still going to be greater than or equal to 0. Why greater than or equal to 0? y is an element of real numbers. Okay, so we've got that all done here. Now this one, it's a, oh, it says also state the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry for this one, I've shifted it over to 5, so that means the axis of symmetry is going to be right there, right? Um, axis of symmetry, symmetry will be x equals 5. Because I moved it right there. This is the line x equals 5. All the x's are 5 on this line. 5, 0, 5, 1, 5, 2, 5, 3. Right? Okay, so this is getting a little squishy. I didn't leave myself enough room, sorry. Okay, this one, um, they want you to, um, it's to the fifth power. So state the domain and range. We should talk about what's happened here. So first we have a quarter. So that's a vertical compression. Remember, the, the y stuff is easy. Factor 1 quarter. Um, this is minus 2 here. So the negative, now remember we're horizontal now. So if I change the x's from negative to, po negative to positive or positive to negative, I'm reflecting about the y-axis. So reflection about the y-axis, I think. Well, I've covered every possible transformation here. Two, that would be, it's not a horizontal stretch. It's going to be a compression, horizontal compression by a factor of one over K. So factor of one half. Make sure you don't put the negative with this, right? It's only a reflection. Now, horizontal shift, right 
five, uh, sorry, three units and vertical shift up four units. Okay, so we've covered all the different transformations. We've given the equation. There is no axis of symmetry for this because it is a quintic function, power five, quintic, quartic, cubic, quadratic, linear. Okay, so that's going backwards. Um, state the domain and range. Well, this is a cubic function, so as not cubic, but quintic. So you know it has to start in this quadrant. Oh, sorry, it has a negative leading coefficient. So remember the negative line. So it's going to be going something like that. Don't worry about where it's crossing. We just need to know what's happening here and here. So the, the range is y is an element of real numbers. The domain is x is an element of real numbers. x element real range y element real. There you go. Okay, so then I'm going to draw a little line here because it might be a little hard to see what the question is. So uh, the last thing I'm going to do for you is um, a question from the textbook that is a little bit different from the way you've been doing things so far. It says x cubed has undergone the following transformations. Horizontally stretched by a factor of 7, horizontally translated 4 units left, and vertically translated 2 units down. And they ask you, what would be the coordinates of these three points? So because it's written this way, we could go forward and backward here first by giving the, um, giving the equation. So I'm going to do that first, even though it's not necessary for this, and I'll show you why in a minute. But let's say we wanted to know what the equation was going to be. So horizontally stretched by a factor of 7, that means that k has to be equal to 1 over 7. Right? If it's stretched by 7, the k had to have been 1 over 7. Translated 4 units left, so d is going to be equal to negative 4, which when you plug it in makes it positive. Right? And vertically translated down, um, down 2 units, so c is going to be equal to minus 2. So if I were to give the equation, I'd say y equals, now I don't have an a value, so it's going to be x. Um, oh, I should have left a little room here because I need a bracket. Because this is a k value, so it's going to go in front of my x. So 1 seventh x to the power of oh, x, and it shifted 4 units left. So that's plus 4. You have to watch the brackets here because this has already been factored out of the equation because it's telling you how far it's going. So to the left 4 means plus 4 here. Factor of 7 means 1 7 here. It's a cubic function. And then we do minus 2. Okay, so that would be what the equation would look like. Um, the mapping rule, however, would just be 7x minus 4 and y minus 2. So we could have gotten that right from here. I just wanted to make sure that you didn't get confused with where these numbers, how these would fit into the mapping rule. So once you've written out a mapping rule, it, you can read it right off, right? 7x minus 4, y minus 2. And then finally, you just plug in these values here to get your answers for x and y. So minus 7 minus 4 is minus 11. Minus 1 minus 2 is minus 3. 0, 0, so that's going to be negative 4 minus 2. Uh, 14 minus 4 is 10. And 8 minus 2 is 6. And that's how you would do it, just like that. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it for today. If you have any questions, specific questions, you can leave a comment and I'll try to get to them for you. Uh, please like the video, subscribe, and have a great day. A few more lessons and we're done chapter three.